Yes, that's it. I think there are indeed those parallels. Indeed, in chapter 11, Krishna is, is, does call himself death, I am time, and he's the destroyer of worlds and so on, very much akin to Shiva. Now, um, I think Abhinava got to, there's a, writes a commentary on the Bhagavad Gita on the Kashmir rendering of it. I think it's, it's some slight differences to the, to the um, critical edition. But um, I think this just bears witness to the importance of that text, the, the way that text had become pan-Indian or pan-Hindu. And it had become a terribly important text. So in a, in a sense, I've been able to, to how to write a commentary on it, how to sort of colonize it with his Shaiva worldview. Um, because it was, of course, written long before the, the rise of the dominance of Shaivism. Uh, so, in a sense, he writes that text, I think, the commentary, to um, bring the Bhagavad Gita within the realm of his Shaiva understanding. But apart from that one uh, commentary, I, I'm speaking of uh, ignorance here, really, but I don't know of any other commentary on the Bhagavad Gita from a Shaiva perspective. I'm not sure if Sri Kanta wrote one. Um, I'd have to check, but I think I mean, Avagupta is the exception to the rule. Uh, uh, sorry, is the um, is the only um, Shaiva appropriation of the Bhagavad Gita that we have. Um, so I think conceptually they are similar, but I think the Shaiva tradition, on the whole, apart from that commentary by I mean, Avagupta, seems to have ignored um, Vaishnava sources.